and he professed to be a demon. He himself said he. And yeah, I'm playing 2K in the background. Grind don't stop. <laughs> was a demon. Certain stuff that how you do, like you sleep in the graveyard for like three days, four days to a week. Uh, drink chicken, like animal blood. It's different stuff though. Like, you know, like, you know? Drink chicken blood. You're from Florida. I would expect that from somebody in like Louisiana. That voodoo mess. Yeah, New Orleans. Yeah, you in Florida? He from Florida. I don't really think about. It. I just this the life we live in. Shit, we know the consequences and everybody know the consequences in the street. Dead in jail, and if you don't know the consequences, get out the street. You know what I'm saying I said what I said. I'm, I'm just stand on that. Crazy boy. Welcome back to another episode of Swamp Stories. For this one, we center around possibly the most dangerous rapper of all time. Some call him evil, others call him sociopathic, but overall, this is a man who embodies every single bad aspect of being a rapper. We all know generally the terrible things he was about, but oftentimes the story is much deeper than what's on the surface. At the end of the day, we're all human, and given bad circumstances, we're all capable of doing some horrible things. So before you celebrate his loss, let's dive into his life, what he's been through and what led him down an evil path. Regardless, this video was definitely one of the craziest ones yet and I promise you do not want to miss a single second. But before we get into it, let me run the intro. Oh yeah, his intro file. Welcome to Jacksonville, Florida, a city long known for old people, retirement homes, and enclosed pools. Okay. I bet you weren't expecting that, were you? It's the truth though, bruh. Oh, my mama. No, really. Jacksonville, Jacksonville has always been known as a great place to retire. In particular, buying a suburban home is cheap and there's a whole lot of land available. In fact, it's by far the biggest city in mainland America, and you can actually fit 19 San Francisco's inside of the city. This makes it easily the most spread out city in America, which is perfect for people who hate crime, neighbors, or really anything dangerous. But like anywhere in America, it's a good place to live. America, Jacksonville definitely has its hoods too. Of the course. hoods of Jacksonville exist almost exclusively on the north and west sides of the city. Here you'll find neighborhoods resemblant of Memphis or Baton Rouge with a whole lot of open carrying, bail bond signs, and a ton of abandoned ab homes all over like this one with ripped out electrical boxes, boarded up windows across the street. It's like that. Hold street on. I'm gonna I'm a be muting because the vid already long. It's like that in South Carolina too. Looks, it was always known for being laid back, donk riding, and crazy hair wearing. But in this video, you'll see how one man single-handedly changed the vibe from being overly player to being evil and possibly a worse drill scene than Chicago. No, for real. Jacksonville is bad. And in this video, we start in one of the North Side's most infamous hoods. The video begins in an infamous Section 8 project called the Hilltop Village, also known as the Bricks for short. The worst hood in Jacksonville, like literally the worst hood, Hilltop Village Apartments. I'm, 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 I'm appalled about how these residents are living. We're gonna go to Hilltop Apartments right now. You for real? Don't, don't, I ain't do that. Even the kids know, bro. Always been That's a kid, and his eye messed up. And violence, robberies, raids, and more. In fact, it got so bad that the city mandated they put a metal fence around the property, only allowing residents on the premises. Well, here is where a man named Charles Jones, also known as Rick the Ruler, was seen as the landlord. Not exactly the person who collects the rents, but the man who's in charge of running all of the street activities in the project. Crazy. For years, Rick was deeply feared on the north side, kind of like the boogeyman. Well, simultaneously, Rick was a father as well, with a son named Charles Jones Jr. who lived with him and his mother in the bricks. Born in 1998, Charles Jr. experienced an extremely violent period on the north side, surrounded by nothing but chaos and violence. This made lending a normal childhood nearly impossible for Charles, as focusing on school and even sleeping at night were difficult tasks. He basically grew up roaming around the projects, seeing things that he probably should not have been seeing. Then, at 11 years old, he witnessed something that truly no kid should ever see. Murder. It's a late afternoon in the bricks and Charles and his friends are hanging out in the courtyard. As they're playing games and minding their own business, suddenly they start hearing a loud confrontation. 
So Charles naturally looks over and sees his best friend's mom and her boyfriend getting into a fight. Mm. The argument gets heated and sadly the man lets his emotions get the best of him. He whips out and makes a terrible decision. His mama. The man runs away and everyone comes in to help the woman. They rush her to the hospital where Done. thankfully she survives. Mm. Regardless though, witnessing this at 11 would scar Charles Jr. for life. It was so crazy. I was so close to my dog at the time. I'm watching him cry like, and then I'm seeing her lay down on the steps. She lift her on her shirt up. She like, I'm shot. I'm like, this is really going on. You feel me? That night, like, that just fucked my mind up. Night, that just showed me like, cause you know when you a kid, you don't think death for real. That showed me that death is real, like, you know? I mean, I did. I mean, I did. I lost my great grandma. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Okay, she actually died? Nah, she ain't died, but I'm looking at her bleeding. You know what I'm saying? Hilltop was stamped in his mind by this horrible incident, and it was no place to continue to grow up. So thankfully, at the age of 12, his father moved to the west side of Jacksonville, relieving him from all the problems of the bricks. So starting in the sixth grade, little Charles went to school and lived on the west side of Jacksonville, which really wasn't that much better. Okay, it was definitely better than living in the bricks, but it also wasn't Beverly Hills. Let me explain. Charles moved to the corner of 24th Street, located in an area full of low to middle class houses. Here, because it's also low income, things do happen, but it's nothing like the constant chaos of the bricks. Well, while living here, Charles befriended a man named Dwayne who lived right up the block on 25th. Little did Charles know the seemingly friendly Dwayne had an arrest record as long as Crip Max vocabulary. <laughs> okay, so it wasn't that long, but it included some disgusting crimes that I can't say on YouTube. All I can say is that Dwayne is registered. GG's, pack him up. Regardless, Charles doesn't know this and Dwayne is often at his house hanging out. They quickly become homeboys and that takes us to May 11th, 2011. It's a Wednesday afternoon and Junior comes home to an argument right outside of his house. Dwayne and his father are yelling at each other over something that seems to be minor. So little Charles thinks nothing of it and heads to his room. Regardless, he doesn't want this kind of energy near his son, so Big Charles asks Dwayne to leave his house. Unfortunately, Dwayne doesn't- You shouldn't even have a, a man like that in your house, but I'm guessing he ain't know. ...doesn't respect his wishes and the two get into a squabble. They get it in in front of the house and from what we know, Big Charles beats his- mm. Obviously, mm. Dwayne is now even more pissed and he decides to head back home. Big Charles is kind of feeling good about himself and he really doesn't think much of it, just another fight in the hood. But little does he know, Dwayne has a couple of screws loose. At 12.30 a.m., little Charles is asleep in his room and Big Charles is in the living room watching TV. That's when he hears a loud knock on the door. So he gets up, sees that it's Dwayne, Boom. and decides to let him in. He assumes that Dwayne is there to make peace or to apologize for the- He just lost a fight. Why would you- why would you bring him in? ...argument, but sadly that's not the case. Boom. Bang. Either way, at first, Dwayne plays the part and he sits down to talk with Charles. They discuss what happened for a few minutes until Dwayne's emotions get the best of him and he whips out. Of course, that's not com he didn't have common sense. I don't want to speak bad on the on the on the dead, but my gosh, he just lost the fight. He got to the squad. Police would lost. arrive to discover Charles lifeless on the ground and Dwayne sitting on the couch. Sadly, there was no saving Big Charles and they were left to investigate Dwayne. So what happened? Well, we had an argument on the couch and things went bad. It's simple as that. So right then and there, police put Dwayne in handcuffs and take him straight to jail. For Charles Jr., this saw was it. a terrifying and devastating moment of his life, something you can never recover from. His father was his idol and he always dreamed of making the football team to impress him. So to experience something like this at just 12 years old, I can't even imagine. He just died, you know what I'm saying? I was young, I was like 12, 13, so you know what I'm saying? We didn't get to yeah. do much together, like, you know? That shit put my head up. Like, that shit every like My family, his side of the family, it was just a, a messed up situation. Like, I was like, damn, like, people really kill, like, take somebody you love from you, like. The tragic incident oh, a lot of hate too. affected Junior's outlook on the world as his heart because you lose a fight. turned cold. Understandably, after the loss of his father, he began fighting in school and spiraling down a bad path. Mm -hmm. His fights were on a daily basis. He started getting suspended, expelled, and even carrying a blick. Basically, with Where, the, where's grandparents? Little Charles started to act way too old for his age, even going to clubs at just 13 years old. That's when like I jumped out the porch, like I got my first gun and 
you know what I'm saying, evolving and seeing like different stuff coming at me so fast. And my first clubs, I went to my first clubs, fighting and all type of crazy stuff. It was just a lot going on around me. Like, okay, we walk in the club. Like we walk into every club, like 50 deep. At this point, at just 13 years old, he was already jumped off the porch and hanging with the older guys in the neighborhood. And in order to prove himself and impress his peers, he started to act completely wild. Kind of like a young gangsta Williams, he was already known for letting that heat blow, and that's why he earned the nickname of Fulio. But even though Fulio was now fully in the streets, he remained going to school for one particular reason. The boy loved football, and at this point, he still had Division I dreams. For this reason, he steadily kept his grades up in order to make the football team. So even after all the tragedies in his life, there was still hope for a young Fulio. <sighs> Because of his love for football, Fulio had a very successful freshman year of high school. But Good. then, while everything is going well, sadly, another tragedy would hit him hard. That introduces us to Fulio's best friend, an 11th grader named Aaron Man Man Brooks. Fulio and Aaron Anybody named Man Man, that ain't good for you. together as kids in North Jacksonville, with basically Aaron being the big homie. Well, despite Fulio moving away, he and Aaron actually remained close as Aaron wanted to see him succeed. Aaron was actually a good football Oh, that's a good man, man. But at this good point, man's. he was completely mixed up in the dangerous North Jacksonville politics. And that takes us to April 14th, 2014, 9.30 p.m. It's a Monday night, and Aaron is walking back home after picking up some food. Well, little does he know, a car has been slowly following behind him ever since he left the store. Eventually, he notices the lights, looks behind him, and sees a man hopping out of a car. So instantly, Aaron starts sprinting down 4th Street, but sadly, the man catches up. Mm -hmm. The neighbors call 911 after hearing shots, and Jacksonville police arrive. Unfortunately, they don't see a victim, so they just write it off as a false alarm. What? Maybe Tupac wasn't lying when he said, They don't give a f about it. Like, how is it even possible? You heard the shot, bro. You should have. They ain't even look. Literally on the street. Well, Jacksonville sucks. And because of this, Aaron's family had to worry all night where is our son? Is he at a friend's house? Where did he go? And sadly, that takes us to the next morning. It's 7 in the morning, and a group of high schoolers are walking to the bus stop. And they see it. As they're approaching the bus stop on 4th Street, sadly, that's where they notice their classmate, Aaron. They're obviously terrified and they call 911. The police come and figure out who it is, and word starts to spread around Jacksonville. For Fulio, he was in second. Ain't no telling if he died on the spot or he or he was living. Or they there was a chance to actually save him. Period when he discovered the news, and once he learned, he completely dropped to his knees. He's absolutely devastated that he just lost his best friend, but quickly the pain turns into anger. This is Fulio's breaking point. The loss of Aaron tipped a 15-year-old Fulio over the edge as he no longer saw life in a positive manner and now he wanted to give up on football. Now he was purely angry and wanted to just be a demon in the streets. And during his sophomore year of high school, an opportunity to be in the streets would arise. Or at least he thought. He begins hanging with the older homies who he used to hang out with when he first moved to the west side of Jacksonville. When he used to hang out with them, they were all kids, but now they're all grown up and they're repping a clique called Head First ENT, also known as HFE. HFE were basically a group of teenagers who jumped off the porch together and didn't really rep a block. Instead, they just repped West Jacksonville. The story goes that after giving up on football, Fulio started to approach them to hang out. Like, hey, remember me? I was the little kid who moved to West Jacksonville and used to be your friend. Oh, Unfortunately, HFE still saw him as the broke little dirty kid from the bricks. So basically, they'd only hang out with him in private, and once he approached them trying to be HFE, they completely laughed and mocked him. They took Fulio as a joke and they did not want him running with them in the streets. In particular, a guy Fulio looked up to named HFE Big Baby went from his cool big homie to get out of my face, little dude. <sighs> this rejection could not have come at a worse time. Fulio lost doing? his father and his best friend, so now he was really just looking for family. Like, damn, I don't have my dad, my best friend, and the people I used or to grandparents treating me like trash. Something going on. So when already angry Fulio lets his emotions get the best of him, it's me versus everyone. 
He goes on social media and makes the bold decision to diss Big Baby and the rest of the HFE members. I don't care who you oh, think you are Facebook. and how many people you Facebook. hang with, I'm not scared of any of you. This is obviously a risky move as Fulio lives in their neighborhood, goes to school in their neighborhood, Crazy. and he's way outnumbered. But this dude does not care. He's the definition of a crash out. And that takes us to December 10th, 2014. It's an early Wednesday morning in West Jacksonville and HFE Big Baby is waiting for the bus. He has his headphones in and is completely zoned out. No idea of what's going on around him. So little does- Ain't no way. Uh, please tell me snuck him. Does he know a man in a mask is creeping up on him from across the street? The man in the mask walks right up to the bus stop and with HFE Big Baby not paying attention, he lets loose. <laughs> Police quickly arrive to the scene, but sadly it's far too late. Let it be justice! A small prayer group made their presence known in Grand Park today. They prayed for healing. All that they need is in the house, Lord. Their church sits at the intersection of 13th and Canal, where this morning this was the scene as police roped it off, gathering evidence. Pastor David Bennett says he heard at least 15 rounds go off around 6:30 a.m. My well, gosh! Out the house I heard the rounds going off, so I was just getting out, and my kids were getting out too in the house. When he came outside, he saw the body on the street. We now know the victim is 16-year-old Devron Crowden. This is an older picture of him his grandmother sent us. To his friends, he was known as simply Big Baby. The word quickly spreads around the community, prompting grieving and even protests. Now protesters are taking to the street near the shooting scene, closing the roads once again to demand answers. For Big Baby's classmates, they would receive the news from an announcement at school. Obviously, mm. everyone is shocked and saddened, but Big Baby's close friends, they're devastated. Then Get quickly, back. the pain turns into anger, mm -hmm. and they're eager to know who's responsible. Of well, course. while everyone is posting commemoration for Big Baby, Fulio is doing acting a fool on social media. The exact opposite. He instantly clowns Big Baby on Facebook, making I everyone it. I said Facebook too, boy. Assume that he did it. How was Fulio? How old was he? I think he was around my age. I'm 23. I think he was like 25. Or at least that he had something to do with it. As soon as they see this, HFE automatically assumed that it was Fulio who did it, and now they're on his trail. But because they're at school and don't have weapons, they first seek to fight him. So lunchtime comes around and three HFE members go searching for Fulio. They spot him in line at the cafeteria, they surround him, and they Jump start him. whooping his- <sighs> mm -hmm. Quickly though, the security guards break it up, and the sides go their separate ways. Whether or not Fulio actually eliminated Big Baby, HFE take it as a fact and now they want him gone. Fulio knows this and he also knows that once he leaves the campus, the consequences might be serious. So Stay instead campus. of waiting for the school day to finish, he Stay goes school. to the bus stop early in order to ride home safely. Mm. So Fulio hops on the bus and thankfully there's no rivals aboard. He feels like he's home safe. Long story short, the bus arrives at 2.30 and Fulio hops off with no worries in the world. In fact, he's so not worried that instead of rushing home, he walks to the bushes to roll up. Well, as he's walking to the bushes, all he hears is bang. He's hit up Why aren't you worried? You should have been- Somebody could have been waiting on you the whole time. Behind. Looking, lurking. And he loses all feelings in his legs. So he desperately tries to crawl into the bushes, but sadly he can't move fast enough. That's when he senses somebody right behind him and he turns around and looks up. A man in a mask is standing over him and Fulio figures that this is it. This is how it all ends. But after making eye contact, the man shakes his head and simply runs away. For whatever reason, he spares Fulio, but still, Fulio is gravely injured. So he calls 911 for an ambulance, and police arrive in three minutes. When they arrive, he's relieved, and he figures that they're gonna tend to his wounds. But instead, they simply open a notebook and start asking him questions. Was it- All right, Jacksonville police just straight up retarded. You who killed Big Baby this morning. Man, what? Just take me to the hospital. Fulio is frustrated that they're not even helping him, but thankfully an ambulance arrives in under 10 minutes. After undergoing surgery, he thankfully survives, but he still has a major recovery left. Yeah. But still, this incident woke him up good. 
or at least it should have. What this should have taught him is that trolling somebody's death is not a good idea, especially in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. And that's assuming that he isn't responsible for Big Baby and only that he trolled him after his death. But whether or not he was the one who did it, the beef was still definitely on. Thankfully though, Fulio would be completely off the streets for the next five months as he had to relearn how to walk after having hip surgery. Mm. Still though, what happened to him had serious implications in Jacksonville. And that brings us right back to his original hood, the Hilltop Village. After learning of back. what happened to Fulio, the Hilltop Village were ready to go to war for him. They knew he was by himself against everyone in West Jacksonville, so they stepped up in his defense. Well, not to say that HFE wasn't intimidating, but Hilltop Village is a whole different animal. So let me introduce you to their main factors. Basically, all of Fulio's early childhood friends didn't make it in school and jumped into the streets. Where are the old heads at, man? They'd be like, oh, have a good head on your shoulders on your shoulders do this that third my goodness these would be kendra trey d dirk kojak t shot spaz and many more trust me essentially these are all the teenagers who stepped up on fulio's behalf against hfe things are about to get crazy in jacksonville but while fulio was recovering in the hospital sadly he would take another tragic loss who it's now March of 2015 and Fulio is almost done with his recovery. He's finally walking again and he'll be back on the streets of Jacksonville in no time. Well, while Fulio is away recovering, his homies in the bricks are outside wilding. In particular, his 16-year-old cousin named Kendra jumped off the porch and is now riding around in Stolo. Crazy. He's recently known for hitting licks, taking cars, and really doing anything in the books. Well, quickly, his bad behavior would catch up to him. March 19th, 2015. Kendra Alston is joyriding a stolen car through North Jacksonville. After riding around for about 15 minutes, he decides to head back to the brakes. So he turns into the gate, and that's when he notices a Jacksonville sheriff behind him. After running his place, <laughs> the sheriff realizes that it's a stolen car, so he These Jacksonville kids, they just don't be thinking it. These Florida kids just don't. off, and he drives to the cemetery right across the street. As he's driving through the grass, he notices another sheriff waiting at the exit. The officer is standing outside of his car, expecting Kendra to slow down and put his hand hands up. But Kendra has no plans for stopping as he absolutely gasses towards the exit. As the car is flying towards him, thankfully the officer is able to jump out of the way, but that's when Kendra smacks into his car. After crashing, somehow Kendra is able to get up as he hops out of the car and begins running away. However, officers notice a blick in his hands, and sadly that's Done. when they have to do what they do. Y'all just don't learn. Y'all just don't learn. This was a devastating loss for Fulio, his family, and the entire north side of Jacksonville. Did y'all see me getting up in the vid? Bro, my chair keep dropping. I'm chilling, running 2K, and listening to this. Learning. Andre was one of his closest childhood friends, so this was yet another about. terrible loss for Fulio. But not only was it devastating, but the community also felt like it was potentially unjustified. Well, police say that that 16-year-old who was shot and killed yesterday was driving in a stolen car with another person. Both of them had stolen handguns, and they used the car to allegedly try to run over a police officer before leading that police officer on a foot pursuit. But community activists say in light of all the recent police shootings, it would help if police had video evidence. This Facebook picture was posted on Kendry Austin's page by one of his friends two hours after he was shot by a police sergeant following a car pursuit and chase. Even though police say Austin flashed a gun, community activist Diallo Siku is skeptical about what really happened. He says body cameras on police would leave nothing to question. That's a, you'd be surprised. This was back then. Now look, look at us. Look at us now. We got him now. And guess what? These white people out here will question it. Oh, he, it looked like a gun of the sheriff department to be able to see uh, hands on what what it is that they were dealing with directly because there's no footage we'll truly never know why people gonna say that and uh these black people that black people that want to please the white people what happened so i guess we've got to take Coons. the officer's word and now we fast forward to a very important chapter at this point fulia was home from the rehab center and the beef with hfe is fully on November 3rd, 2015. It's a late afternoon in West Jacksonville and HFE members are outside hanging out on Ellis Street. In particular, two of these are twin brothers, AMP and Bando, who happen to be Big Baby's best friends. Well, because the beef has been dried, the HFE members are outside comfortable and in fact, Bando walks to the store by himself. 
So at 7 o'clock, he casually walks up Palafox Street towards the liquor store. Well, as he's walking up the street, he randomly hears an eruption of gunfire. Run. Bando is shocked and he instantly starts running back to the block to protect his brothers. Unfortunately though, it's too late as his twin brother AMP is critically hit. The ambulance arrives relatively quickly, but sadly it's far too late. All of his family and friends come around to grieve. It's truly a tragic scene. By nighttime, after police clear the scene, they get the candlelights together and they grieve his loss. Really? But while all of this is going on, they all start to wonder one thing. Where is his twin brother? Get back, then he finna end up getting packed up too. So instantly, Bando's family and friends start calling him, but strangely, he doesn't pick up. So now everyone is nervous. Hey, where could Bando be? The He's HFV done. members remember that he went somewhere right before things cracked off, but they don't recall exactly where. So now all of his family and friends begin to scour the neighborhood. After scouring through the neighborhood, they sadly discover Bando a block down from the store. How could this be possible? He was over four blocks away from the scene. Everyone of course is devastated, but they're also extremely confused. Did the assailants go back around and find him, or what other explanation is there? Well as it turns out, Bando somehow caught a stray while he was running back to the scene. The chances of this happening are- I'm finna say, hold on, let me go back a little bit. Or like Bando somehow- I'm, mm, I'm assuming there's buildings all over here. There's no, well, this gotta be the people then. This gotta be the people. It would make sense. From here to here? Okay, but the gun right here though? That's crazy, the chance of that? Al caught a stray while he was running back to the scene. The chances of this happening are like one in a million, but either way. Bad luck. Way the family was absolutely devastated. Mm. Now the big question is who did this? Everyone instantly assumes that it had to be Fulio. Because this coincidentally happened right after he got on his feet, and also the Facebook trolling, it was pretty obvious that he was somehow responsible. So at this point, everyone in the streets of Jacksonville is under the impression that Fulio eliminated Big Baby, AMP, and Bando. Three, three bodies. Oh. 16 year old. Due to all of Big Baby, AMP, and Bando. Three bodies for a 16 year old. Due to all of this, Fulio was truly becoming known as a demon from the bricks. And sadly from here, things would only get worse. Sadly, after the losses of AMP and Bando, HFE would lose a ton more members. These would include both of Big Baby's brothers, Lenford, Lil Rap, Bubba, John John, Blow Crazy, and Dion. Not to oh, be dramatic or disrespectful, but Fulio and Hilltop were absolutely wiping out HFE. And because the beef was so one-sided, they were pretty much out and about doing the most random things. And that takes us to Christmas Eve 2015. The holiday speed ain't no way someone got packed up on Christmas. Wonderful time for most. Y'all can't let families just chill up and enjoy the enjoy their time together. Presents from Santa. Oh, it's the best time of the year. A time where people can. This one, my grandma got run over by a reindeer. Start playing. Fulio around my age was. Come on, man. The street activities alone. Just kidding, because for the Hilltop Boys, they're on their usual behavior. Mm. Instead of being gathered around with their families, Fulio and his boys are out and about in the suburb of Orange Park, Florida. Basically, they spend the day window shopping, talking to girls, and getting food at the food court, a typical day for teenagers. Then, when the mall closes at 8, they decide to go to the movie theater. Long story short, they movie hop for hours and then empty into the parking lot at midnight. As they're walking through the parking lot, for whatever reason, Fulio whips out a blick and all of his homies do too. They no. basically gather around their car blasting music and wave their blicks in the air, which definitely alarmed the suburban community. Of course. The boys are used to doing this in the projects with zero consequences, so they're not expecting anything to happen. Then at 12.15, they begin hearing sirens, and before they know it, they're surrounded by Orange Park police. Welp, just like that, Fulio catches his very first case. He deserve it. So instead of spending Christmas with his family, Fulio spends the day in the local jail. Thankfully, he's still a minor, but regardless, this is a pretty serious case. In Florida, illegal possession of a stolen weapon plus reckless endangerment, not something to scoff at at all. So during the holiday season, Fulio was faced with the potential of five plus years in jail. Mm. 
However, because he has no record and he's able to convince the judge that he's a good kid who simply made a mistake, the judge decides to be lenient. If he got, I'm the police, I'm the judge, I'm talking to the police. If, if I'm the judge, bro allegedly got three bodies at 16, he's not a good kid. I'm talking to the police about every kid that I'm, every kid that I'm judging. They ultimately sentence him to one month in juvenile to make sure I got the right info. Not knowing that he's an absolute menace in the streets of Jacksonville. See, he ain't know. He do research. Well, regardless, Fulio spends Christmas. So Jacksonville just straight up lazy with everybody. Miss day to late January in juvenile hall until he's finally released. Demons back. But actually, not quite. Let me explain. At this point, HFE had taken so many losses that they basically threw the white flag. So realistically, Fulio no longer had to worry about anyone in the streets of Jacksonville. He's now 18 years old with a whole life ahead of him, and not to mention no criminal record. He can take the GED and then go play Juco football, or he can get a job, find a talent, who knows, something positive. So over the next year and some change, this is exactly what Fulio does. He tries to live a very positive life. Yeah, Good. I've allegedly got some bodies under my belt, but that's the past. I'm older now, and I can move on. By all accounts, Fulio was headed in a great direction. But then out of nowhere, a horrible incident would ruin it. And that introduces us to Fulio's first cousin and very close friend, Zion Brown. Kind of like Fulio, Zion is a young dude in the streets, lost and trying to find his way. However, unlike his cousin Fulio, Zion is known to be a good-hearted kid who's simply born into the wrong circumstance. Well, if Zion's not hanging with his big cousin, he's always hanging with a close childhood friend named Trey Shorty, somebody who he finds to be trustworthy. But little does he know, despite being day one homies, Trey Shorty is not a trustworthy friend. In fact, he has no loyalty to his best friend Zion. Instead, he's only truly loyal to another friend friend group, one called the Aces. The Aces are a crew located in the south to another friend group, one called the Hmm, I never knew this. Aces. The Aces are a crew located in the south suburb of Orange Park and they're led by a guy named Young and Ace. And these guys, despite being from the suburbs, are with all of the activities and are not to be trusted. The Aces are hungry for money and they're willing to cross anyone to get it. So sadly, Fulio's little cousin Zion would learn the hard way. February 5th, 2017. It's a Sunday afternoon and Trey and Zion are set to hang out like any other weekend of their lives. But on this day, little does Zion know, Trey wants to rob him. So at 3 p.m., Trey casually pulls up to his house. They sit down on the couch, play video games, and it feels like a day just like any other. But then out of nowhere, Trey reaches over and takes Zion's blick from him. At first, Crazy. Zion obviously thinks he's playing, but then Trey ups the blick on him. He then proceeds to take some of his possessions and he ends up walking out the door. A car quickly pulls up to pick him up and Trey is off in the distance. At this moment, Zion is absolutely stuck and lost for words. What just happened? Did my childhood best friend just take my blick and rob me? There's no way. When reality finally kicks in, Zion feels nothing but pure betrayal. My childhood best friend really just robbed me. <laughs> Why in the world would he do this? So Zion instantly starts informing his homies, and in particular, one guy is pissed. This would be a close friend from Hilltop named Antoine, but also known as YNR Cho. From all accounts, Antoine is a stepper, not somebody you want to mess with. And mm. once he learned about what happened to his little it's homie over. Zion, he was willing to go out and get revenge. Yep. For the next few weeks, Antoine surfs around the city of Jacksonville looking for Trey Shorty. I want to rob you and get all the stuff back from my little homie. Well, finally in mid-May, Antoine catches Trey Shorty alone in his car and oh. he decides to push up on him. And from what we know, not only does Antoine take all of his stuff, but he also finishes it off with some violence. He pops him in the leg to send a message. Don't mess with Zion or anyone from Hilltop ever again. Mm. Thankfully, Love you, Trey survives, but Antoine's intimidation tactic did not work out very well. Instead of being scared, Trey Shorty now wages war with Antoine. You put Which me in don't the hospital, make sense. I'm not going to let that slide. They got no history behind, behind all this. Please let niggas work. Stop calling shit out, bro. May 27th, 2017. By this time, Fulio is already an up-and-coming rapper, which I'll get to in a second. And because of this, he has a place in Daytona Beach where he can duck off from the dangerous Jacksonville streets and focus on his music. Well, on this particular Saturday, Zion desperately wants to spend the rest of the weekend with Fulio in Daytona. However, because the two recently got into an argument, Fulio does not want his cousin Zion around. 
He called me, he was like, Big Cub. That's my cousin, you know what I'm saying? He like, Cub, let me come to Daytona with you. I'm trying to come to Daytona. I was mad at him for a dumbass reason. Like, I straight told him, no, bro, you can't call me. Like, and I don't what happened? You right now. Hung up on him. So instead of spending the weekend with his cousin in Daytona, he resorts to staying home and inviting over Antoine. Little does Zion know, Antoine is being hunted by the aces. Mm. To him, it's just like any other Saturday. Antoine comes over to his house and they sit on the couch playing video games. And during the course of the afternoon, Antoine posts an Instagram story Where clearly showing that he's at Zion's house. What? Oh, you just shot somebody. Y'all don't think, these people are just young and dumb, man. This is pretty typical, and Zion doesn't really think anything of it. But little does he know, this is the worst mistake Antoine could make. Trey Shorty sees the story and automatically recognizes Zion's house. So instantly, he and an unidentified friend make some horrible plans. That takes us to 1.15 in the morning. Everyone is knocked out asleep on the couch while Antoine is up on his phone. That's when suddenly everyone is woken up to a burst of shots. Antoine instantly grabs Zion's sisters and drags them behind the couch. Then when the shots finally stop, Zion gets up from the other side of the couch to make sure his sisters are okay. But simultaneously, that's when glass shatters mm. and a man comes jumping through the window. The Bloody intruder sucks. then gets up and runs into the living room. And there, all he sees is Zion. And even though Zion isn't his target, the man still makes a terrible decision. <laughs> Ambulances quickly arrive, but them. sadly, it's far too late to save Zion. Well, Tom, she's describing this as a home invasion in which the gunman made forced entry into the back door. Now, I got to tell you that what's really disturbing about all this is they just say the window that while all this was happening, there were some small children in this home who had to witness the horror unfold right before their eyes. This was a tragic moment in Jacksonville, especially because Zion wasn't even the target and he was known to be a great guy. But on a positive him. note, both Antoine and Zion's sisters were able to recover in the hospital. While in Daytona, Fulio would one receive one the two. devastating news. My little cousin, no way, the one who never bothered anyone. Fulio was crushed by the news, but on top of this, he even started to blame himself. If I just would have let him come to Daytona, this never would have happened. Can't blame yourself, no. Crushed. Cause it's like I could have saved him, like you know, that shit ain't like that shit. That shit like crushed me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yet another devastating and senseless loss in the life of Fulio. Previous to this incident, Fulio had actually been doing pretty well. His rap career was starting to take off, he wasn't involved in any crime, and good. on top of this, he was living a pretty good life. But just like back when he was in high school, whenever he takes a devastating loss, it sends him down a really bad path. It's almost like whenever things are going oh, good, boy. something bad happens, and then he turns into a complete destructive demon. So just like that, the loss of Zion reignited the evil flame inside of Fulio. Now Gigi's Fulio's crash first out. question is crash who out. did this? This is when his family and friends tell him about Trey Shorty and instantly he wants revenge on him. But then they inform him just about his family in done. general and that a rapper named Young and Ace has been dissing Zion. <gasps> this is all it takes. Fulio's savage mode is fully activated on the Aces. So first he discovers that both Trey Shorty and Young and Ace live in the suburb of Orange Park, Florida. And after watching music videos and examining social media posts, he deduces exactly where they live. In particular, he finds the exact address of Young and Ace's mom's house. Ain't no way you finna do that to your mama, to his mama. This is bad news. <sighs> Fulio instantly sends a message of revenge for his cousin Zion. So just a week after the incident, Ace's mom's house is absolutely lit up. One boy shot my house up. I was right on the bed, me and my little brother Quan Quan. They just shot my house up from right up. This is my mama's right up. They shot my mama's house up. They shot this part right up. My mama was in the room. They shot that up. Mm, that don't make sense, man. Just Great like shots. that, a new beef is stamped in the Jacksonville streets. On one side, you have moms. I mean, they just, they popped them. They popped, what's the name? Zion? Right there. Hey, the little girl's up. 
the kids were in there too. The Ace mm. Top Killers, also known as ATK, which is obviously led by Young and Ace. By this time, Ace is already a successful rapper, giving him the advantage because he has money and reach. On top of this, instead of claiming a specific block like Fulio, the Aces are spread out all throughout Jacksonville. They can basically hit you from any angle, and they definitely have the financial backing to do so. But as we know, Fulio was not the type to bow down to anyone. He's definitely up for the challenge. On top of this, this time around, he's not just representing Hilltop. In fact, he has a gang behind him. He would call them KTA, which stands for Kill Them All. Mm. Basically, KTA would be everyone from Hilltop and surrounding areas who mess with Fulio. So now the beef is officially on. KTA versus ATK. Jacksonville is divided. I always wonder where, um, where that beef come from. But in the meantime... Hey, I'm a civilian. I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. I'm glad I'm a seal. <laughs> there is hope that the beef settles down. Let me explain. After collecting the necessary evidence, phone records, and witness testimony, Trey Shorty is arrested for the murder of Zion Brown. So in theory, because the man who's responsible for kicking off the beef is now arrested, the beef could possibly end. But when you're dealing with a maniac like Fulio, you still want revenge in a major way. <sighs> and that takes us to June 5th, 2018. It's a major day for Ace and his family as his younger brother Quan just graduated high school and it's his friend 2-3's birthday. So of course it's celebration time and Ace wants to do something for his boys. However, because of the existing beef, being out and about in Jacksonville is not a smart idea. And because of this, both the graduate and the birthday Hold boy on. do not want to go out. It's yeah, bro is out here making money from his rap career. They said it. He was already successful. I don't know how much. How far? Get up out of Florida. <laughs> get, get out of there. Dangerous. But for whatever reason, Ace is not scared of Fulio and his goons, and he tells his boys, They got something to go out. That's it, bro. Pretty much everyone except Ace is hesitant to go out, but because he's the big dog, his word goes. So now the plan is to hit them all so Ace can get them fresh, and then for family to gather <sighs> around for dinner after. At 6 o'clock, Ace, Quan, 2, 3, and a friend named 4 hit the mall. The particular mall is located all the way on the eastern end of Jacksonville, so they're really not worried about seeing ops. Realistically, if they're in and out quick and move low-key, they'll be completely fine. But the problem is that they do the complete opposite. Go in there and make not noise. Not only are they loud and take their time, but they also go on Instagram Live clearly showing their- Give the low. Give the low. Somebody just did it before. And they went in there and got him. Why would y'all do it again? Y'all, y'all don't learn. Their location. They're simply enjoying the moment, and because they're gonna meet their family at the restaurant at seven, they're really not too worried. So at seven o'clock, the four boys gather with their family. They could be right around the corner visiting their cousin house or something, getting gas from the store right around the corner. Going, going today, going to a whole other store and get a, a bag of chips. That's not at the other store. At the Wasabi Steakhouse just minutes from the mall. The dinner goes amazing as Quan and 2-3 are surprised with gifts and a whole lot of affection. Then the dinner finishes at 8.30 and they all empty out into the parking lot. Here, they're all tipsy, gathered around, and having the time of their lives. But little do they know, the rivals saw the previous Instagram live at the mall and they're on their way to hunt them. Everyone is oblivious except for Quan, who for whatever reason has an intuition that they need to leave. So mm, he approaches Ace man. and tells him that he thinks they should leave, but Ace blows him off and tells him to simply relax. Stupid. Time is ticking before the rivals arrive in the area. He just graduated too. Emily, two, three now wants to leave as well. He tells Ace that he wants to leave to go link with the girl, but Ace tells him to relax and that that can wait till later. Ace At this is point, dumb. it's almost nine o'clock and the birthday boy and the graduate both want to leave. What are we still doing in this parking lot? It's time to leave. You need to leave! Well, shortly after 9 o'clock, Ace finally concedes and they all hop in the car and take off. But right as they're leaving, the rivals arrive in the area. 2-3 is driving, Ace is in the passenger seat, and Quan and 4 are in the back. At this point, they're all in good spirits. 2-3 is about to go link with the girl, Ace is happy the night went smoothly, Quan is relieved that nothing happened, and 4, he's probably just they got lucky. happy too. <laughs> well, as they leave the mall, they end up at a red light right down the street. While they're sitting at the light, not paying attention, a car full of KT- If I just gave up the low, I w I'm not stopping at no red light. Yeah, members pulls alongside them. Then out of nowhere, all they hear is- an absolute barrage of fire hits the car. 
Everyone ducks down and Ace yells at 2-3 to drive away, but they're not accelerating and there's no response from 2-3, so Ace simply hops out of the car. When the shots finally stop and the rivals screech away, Ace crawls back to the car to check on both of them gone. On his friends. The car is completely riddled, and once he looks inside, he simply drops to his knees. Sadly, Quan, 2, 3, and 4 are all gone. Great sus, man. Then when Ace is on the ground grieving, he realizes that he's hit too. <gasps> An ambulance quickly arrives, and thankfully Ace survives. When he finally wakes up, he thinks that had to be a nightmare. There's no way that just happened. But sadly, this is when he's hit with the horrendous news. We continue to follow local breaking news from the south side. The search is on for a killer. Three people shot and killed another wounded critically in an apparent shooting on the south side near the UNF campus and St. John's Town Center. People are telling us that they're shocked that something like this happened in that area, an area not known for this type of crime. The way this all came down is apparently one car is sitting there, another car drives up uh, beside it, and somebody in that second vehicle opens fire to the four who were sitting in the adjacent car. Three people died right there at the scene. Mm. That's it, boy. Your brother passed on his birthday, and his two friends passed as well. Because Ace gave up the low. The red light was probably right there in front of it. I don't even know how far it was. Ace is absolutely crushed beyond comprehension. You couldn't imagine such a bad outcome, especially on such a joyous day. The next morning, Ace posts that he tried to cover up 2-3 and that he's simply sorry. And he also thanks God that he's still alive. But regardless, this is just sad, sad, sad. It is. I supposed to have been able to save all of them. I supposed to went with them. I be asking God, like, why? Why not me instead of them? You feel what I'm saying? They've been around me my whole life. They look up to me. You feel me? I was the oldest in the car. You know, like all that, I gotta deal with their mamas. Like, I be calling, checking up on them, see how they doing, but that ain't enough. They mama asked me, why? I don't know why. My mama asked me why they took her son from me. I don't know why, you feel what I'm saying? My mama asked me every day, why? I don't got no answers for her. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why. I'm lost. I feel like it's my fault. I always feel like that. I'm gonna ever feel like that. Mm. Everybody said don't feel like that, but you don't, you don't know how it feels. Like, I don't. It's like everybody on your watch, like, they right here with you. How could you let this happen? You know what I'm saying? Like, I put it on my pivot. How could I slip? You know what I'm saying? How could I slip? You know what I'm saying? Why? You, you slip because of that ego. It was your ego, bro. You out there chilling, going live on IG. It's social media. It's, it's social media every single time. One on point. Not only does he start to blame himself, but from here the situation would only get worse for the young rapper. Because of the severity of the incident, it was constantly all over the local news. And given that Young and Ace is a popular rapper and the lone survivor, his picture was all over the broadcast. As most people feel terrible for him in this situation, one particular person has other intentions. And surprisingly, this time it's not Fulia. Oh, I thought it was. I'm trying to say Mr. Crashaw. Instead, it's the owner of a local gun store who automatically recognizes Ace's picture. He sees on the news that Ace is a convicted felon, and he realizes that he entered his store, which is actually a federal crime. So while Ace is in the hospital recovering and grieving, a man is out there trying to get him arrested. Mm. So just days. So you just snitching for no reason. If if Ace did something wrong, I could understand. He just walked in there. Later, police arrived to the hospital and put Ace in handcuffs. Not only did he lose his brother and two friends, but now he's- Bro walked in the store. He didn't touch nothing, steal nothing, nothing. You snitch, just a snitch. He's facing a felony, possibly the worst week he could ever have imagined. <sighs> that was just a crazy story, but now we circle back to the man of the hour. The obvious question now is, is Fulio responsible? But come on, we all know the answer. But to make matters even worse, Fulio has zero sympathy for Ace and his family. You took my cousin Zion, so I took your brother and two friends. So the now locally famous Fulio decides to take his trolling to the next level of disrespect. Social media. He decides to make a Rest and Piss 2-3 shirt and post it on Instagram. You wore a t-shirt <coughs> that said Rest and Piss 23. Yeah. They just don't stop. Posted on social media. 
With a, a, I guess a, a picture of him on the shirt? Yeah. But Fulio is such a crash out that he simply doesn't care. In fact, he even takes it to the next level. Shortly after the tragic incident, he releases a song called F That where he says, Oh, you a demon? Well, I turned your whole team into angel dust. See? Y'all that don't even make sense, boy. Also snitches on his friend by saying could have killed the rapper, but Lil Ron f***ed up the drill. Fulio obviously doesn't care about consequences. You don't even, bro, you snitching on your own people. And he's basically owning up to the incident. And the craziest part is that in the song, he gives up his mom's address. Basically saying, come do something, I bet you. Dumb. Oh my gosh. These rappers are dumb. Oh my goodness. Won't. I bet you won't. I bet you won't. Hey, y'all know that song. The point is that Fulio is a next level demon. He doesn't seem to care about his life, consequences, or anything that happens to his rivals. So after eliminating three aces, he's starting to feel like the top dog of Jacksonville. Nobody can mess with me. However, when you're beefing with another big dog like Young and Ace, what goes around comes around too. And that takes us to July 23rd, 2018. Oh, it's a hot Friday afternoon in Jacksonville and Fulio and his boys are outside hosting a block party. Over 500 people are there with music, food, games, and overall good vibes. Chilling. Given the large advertisement and size of the party, Fulio and KTA are not worried about rivals. This is our city, we're up on the score, and we ain't worried. Well, on the other hand, ATK are not thrilled when they see the flyer, and they see this as an opportunity to slide. Regardless, as the day turns into the night, the block party goes by with no incidents. Then the night comes around, the kids go inside, and it's just Fulio, his homies, and some girls outside. They drinking, twerking, and having a time of their lives. But little do they know, the aces are on their way to disturb the peace. At 9.50, a car full of aces approach- I wouldn't have been outside. Just the party. I'm they not drive gonna... around a couple times looking for Fulio. I don't care, my boy's with me, but- Nowhere to be found. They're frustrated that they can't find him, so now they resort to the second option. At 10 p.m., they spot Fulio's best friend named Trey D walking by himself down the street. So that's when an ATK member hops out of the passenger seat and walks right up Bang. to Trey D. Yet walking by yourself, bro caught a stray walking by himself and passed one out of a million chance and you Another devastating loss for Fulio. Not only was Trey D a close childhood friend, but he was also known to be Fulio's enforcer. In fact, Fulio even referred to him as eight, allegedly due to the eight bodies he caught. God, yeah, Trey D was a major enforcer for Fulio. That don't make sense, boy. The loss of Trey D truly hurt Fulio, to the point where he dedicated a song to him called Dirk's Story. In the song, he talks about how they started off hating each other as kids, but then became brothers over the years. And more importantly, he wages revenge on his behalf. But thankfully, over the next few months, the beef would be calm and there would be no revenge. However, this wasn't a sign of peace, but rather that both sides were becoming harder to find. With Fulio and Ace's careers on the rise, both of them were pretty much always out of the hood. And more importantly, whenever they'd go out of town, their entire crews would come with them, meaning that the Jacksonville streets were calm for whatever those days were. Still though, during this period, the beef was forcing people in Jacksonville to choose a side. You're either with the Aces or with Fulio. For some people, it was an easy choice, but for others who had ties on both sides, it was a pretty big dilemma. And that introduces us to a very important person named Willie Boscoon Anderson. What up, man? Willie is Fulio's older cousin and somebody he looked up GGs. to a lot as a kid. He was a well-known hustler, ladies' man, and feared street dude in Jacksonville. Well, unfortunately, this kind of lifestyle got Willie a 10-year prison sentence in 2013. While he was away, Fulio deeply missed his cousin as he would constantly post about free Willie. Somehow these wishes would come true as Willie was released after five and a half years. Mm. Good behavior. Probably. Yay, Willie is home. The family celebrate. well, it's more complicated than what you think. Unfortunately, Willie has bloodlines on both sides of the deadly beef. Mm. On one side, Fulio was his cousin, but on the other side, Queso was actually his half-brother, the son of his dad. So as you would imagine, this put Willie in a major predicament. I don't want to cut off my cousin and his family, but I also don't want to beef with my blood brother. So naturally, when Willie comes home, he tries to be cool with both sides. I don't want any beef, and I have nothing to do with That's what smart. you guys got going on. So in the meantime, he tries smart. his best to stay out of the beef, stay out of prison, and pursue to his rap career. He releases songs like How I'm Coming and How We Coming, which both absolutely slap. While the songs and his reputation give him a slight buzz in Jacksonville, enough to headline a club called Paradise Gentlemen's Club. 
And that takes us to January 15th, 2019. It's a big day for Willie as he's set to perform at a club for the very first time. So naturally, he, his father, and his brother Queso- They finna get him at the club because he got posted. To the club together in a Chevy Tahoe. They arrive to the club, Willie performs, and overall it's a great night. So at 2 in the morning, they exit out of the club truly feeling good about themselves. Big Bro just came home from prison and he's already doing well for himself. It's a cause for a celebration. Well, after the club, they all hop in the Chevy Tahoe and they head their way home. As they're driving up Interstate 95, they have no idea that people have been following them since the club parking lot. Mm. Well, at 2.15, they pull off the interstate and are forced to stop at a red light. This is when three cars surround them and roll down their windows. The car is absolutely torched and everyone inside is hit. After being rushed to the hospital, thankfully, Queso and his father survive. But Willie, sadly, he doesn't make it. Gracious. As a father, taking your son to his first performance, and for this to happen, I can't even imagine. The man who died was Robinson's 25-year-old son, Willie Addison, who was an aspiring rapper. His dad, Abdul Robinson, was driving. I guess two or three Just trying to get his name out there, too. Cars pulled up on the side of us, shot inside our car over 100 times, killed my son in the front seat, shot my son in the back, in the, in the head, three times shot in the back myself twice it's a story hard to imagine but robinson says it was reality and he had to act fast now here's the important question is fulio evil enough to call a hit on his own cousin and uncle just to get to queso or at least if you knew that your cousin and uncle were in the car why would you allow this to happen well in case you had any doubts fulio would respond in the most evil way possible he posts on his story, now I'm smoking on my cousin Willie. Crossing family lines over street beef and now saying that you're smoking your own cousin who you used. Yeah, oh my gosh, Fulio. I see why Charleston White called him a demon. I see it. Him, King Von, I understand it. That man's a demon. He's a demon. He shouldn't have been out here. Mm -mm. Somebody, somebody should have been got him up out of here to look up to. This dude Fulio is absolutely heartless, and from what we know, this tragic incident completely split up Fulio's family for good. Well, as you would expect, this tragedy would- That's why they wasn't talking about his grandparents too? Not come without consequence. Understandably, Queso was hurt beyond comprehension, and now he wants revenge on Fulio in any way possible. And that takes us to February 25th, 2019. It's a typical Monday afternoon at Fulio's mom's house and Fulio and his little homie are hanging out on the couch. This would be a 16 year old Hilltop resident named Adrian Garner, also known as Lil Bibby. Well, Bibby is restless and he doesn't want to be inside doing nothing. However, Fulio being more grown- It's 2019, Fortnite. Fortnite, that's my senior year. 2019, Fortnite. Fortnite still is popping. 2K, you could have you could have been playing 2K. You want to go out, stay your tail inside that house, boy. And knowing everything that's going on, he advises Baby to not go outside. Don't walk nowhere, bro. Sit here with me until it's time for you to go wherever you need to go. You know what I'm saying? Wait till the sun go down or something. And him being a disobedient kid. Baby being young and reckless does not want to hear this. Man, I ain't worried about none of that, man. I'm. Yada 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 man, I don't even care man, I'm in the Oh come down today you go Good all day I'm hanging, you know what I'm saying? He like, man I'm finna go to Hilltop, that's where I'm from I'm like, look bro, I love you bro, be safe, you know So against Fulio's wishes, Baby heads off by himself to the Hilltop projects At 3 o'clock he arrives to the front gate and hops out of his Uber Coincidentally, as he's walking towards the gate, Queso happens to be spinning the block Unfortunately, he spots Baby, recognizes him as Fulio friend and he decides to run down so while baby is gingerly walking and not paying attention queso is walking you don't even look he probably had headphones in too it's 2019 some earbuds airpods whatever ggs up right behind him sadly he has no mercy Bang. you're not even observing bro you're not even looking around i'm gonna say 20 to 25 minutes later i get a call a shooting just happened in Hilltop. I don't know. I'm not even thinking about him at first. I'm like, damn, because it's regular. Like, she was always happening. Like, I'm like, damn. Somebody else called me. You good? Why everybody say you dead, bitch, bro? 
my big brother called me, Jit, where you at? They said, you dead in here, talking. I'm like, hell no. I go on Facebook. A little boy just got killed in here, talk, like 16. So I'm like, burgundy shirt. I'm like, oh, God. Like, I just hang up the phone. His mom and his grandmother beg for the violence on Jacksonville streets to stop. Y'all get together. Then y'all pray. 16. What's that, a sophomore in high school? Yeah, yeah. Just, just fight it out, man. Go rock this city until they get justice for my baby. Until everybody involved are arrested, I am gonna shake Duval County. That was like one of the worst losses, like, cause it's like I just had told him, like, stay right here. Do not, like, it's hot outside, bro. Yet another gut wrenching loss for Fulio, especially for a it's hot. I mean, that's the same thing. It's hot outside. People out here looking for you, looking for me. It's the same thing. Happen like this. And to make matters worse, while he's grieving, the rivals give him a taste of his own. Can you imagine how he felt the whole time. Medicine. Shortly after the incident, Queso would put out a song clowning Bibby and admits to doing it. You know me, bitch, I'm Queso, I smoked Bibby. Then he says he was 16 and I took his soul right up off the streets. This dude, Queso, is cold just like Fulio. But kind of understandably, after being targeted and losing his brother Willie, he really wanted revenge. You took my brother Willie, so I'm gonna take your little homie baby. In addition, after allegedly doing this, he continues to troll online. Yeah. We smoking on baby. You already know. Oh, you smoke that baby. That's nationwide. And smoke baby to the face. I'm like finna put, I'm finna trade my baby. He, he finna be on like Google and shit. It's gonna be like, <laughs> it's gonna be like 16 year old got shot. Up. <laughs> I say hello, I'm gonna up. put that boy ass on Google. Smoking on the baby. I heard they let out 60. We don't show no pity. We don't show no pity. Of course, Fulio was more than pissed, and as you would expect, he, he sends a blitz. I want Queso gone. Now. After allegedly knocking down Bibby, Queso makes the smart decision to stay out of Jacksonville. In particular, he goes on tour with Young and Ace, which removes them from the city for quite some time. Here we are in the small country city but of ain't forget about him, though. across Georgia, located about an hour north of Jacksonville. Here, Queso and other ATK members are ducking low and staying away from the beef. In particular, they're barbecuing and listening to music at a hotel pool, not thinking that anyone will find them. But somehow, after posting videos on their stories, the rivals deduced exactly where they are. So while Queso and his boys are sitting back enjoying their day, the KTA hitters are on their way. After taking the hour and a half drive, the hitters arrive at the hotel at 6.30. They instantly hop out of their truck and run to the pool area, and that's where they see their rivals. Bam. They start blowing and Queso and his boys are blowing back. It's an ugly scene and sadly it claims the life of an ATK member named Rollo. And so far, there have been no suspects arrested, according to the Wake Cross Police Department. However, they do believe that this stems from an ongoing conflict. A local artist, Kenyatta Bullard, whose stage name is Young and Ace, survived a shooting that ended with three of his friends dead in 2018. Now he is tied to another deadly shooting that happened Sunday morning at the Hampton Inn in Waycross, Georgia. Chief of Waycross Police Anthony Tanner says there is more than one shooter. Commenting any further, Bullard, whose stage name is Young and Ace, was scheduled to perform in Waycross on Saturday. It's unclear if he was staying at the hotel or just visiting. Imagine that too. They got, they got his tour stuff. They know where he at 24 seven. Now on social media, a guest who was staying in the hotel recorded video of the aftermath of the shooting, but we are still waiting to get permission from him to show you that video. The lesson here is that whenever you do something to Fulio, he's gonna get back and it doesn't matter where you are. But of course, this is a game of back and forth, and just a couple months later, Fulio would lose yet another friend. On May 7th, a close friend of Fulio named T. Shots would lose his life while leaving a corner store in West Jacksonville. Now 
now it's body for body on both sides and the murder rate in Jacksonville is skyrocketing. And in addition to the bodies dropping, both sides keep clowning and self-snitching online. Like as the beef progresses, the dissing gets more and more disrespectful. Even to the point where Fulio clowns devastating situations that he literally had nothing to do with. And that takes us to for his ego so they can think he done all of this. The mysterious case of young and Ace's homie Corbin. And just to piss them boys off. Essentially, Corbin is a teenager who went to a job interview in the morning and later that night he was reported missing. Well, when he went missing, a lot of people assumed that Fulio and KTA had something to do with this. But in reality, it was a completely different situation that had nothing to do with beef. Well, sadly, in July of 2019, Corbin's body parts would be found in a forest near Jacksonville. And as it turns out, he was set up by an ex-girlfriend to be robbed and then they took him out to the forest and unalived him. The saddest part about it is that Corbin to be robbed and then they took him out to the forest and unalived him. The saddest part about it is that Corbin was a good kid and had literally nothing to do with the streets. Corbin Johnson's remains were found in a wood. They just did it for no reason. Area of Northwest Jacksonville. Still, no arrests have been made. News for Jack's reporter Alicia Hatcher spoke with Johnson's mother. Alicia, Johnson's family, they're still hoping for justice. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office says foul play was suspected because of the way the body was positioned. And I really couldn't identify him. I can tell you every day I went to work, you know, I would have my days, I would cry, come back to my desk, work. I seen him on a picture, and I wish I hadn't, because I can't unsee that. His mom, Melissa Jackson, will never forget the day his remains were found. They identify him from, you know, he, he hurt his arm, and it was the chip that was in his arm from his surgery. I was told that, you know, when you were out there that long, really none of you is left. The grueling and devastating situation is no laughing matter. And just because he hung out with the Aces does not mean that you should disrespect his name. But in typical evil Fulio fashion, he uses this as an opportunity to clown. At first, he goes on Instagram Live and brags about how he could never be kidnapped. The Corbin really did got kidnapped. Like, oh he my got goodness. abducted. Do you know how much sense that makes? Because when you're grown, you get abducted. You don't get kidnapped. Like, type shit. That man got abducted, real shit. Like, that's my worst feeling. Kidnapping me, I swear to God, bro. Like, that man got kidnapped, bro. Lost and found on tight like I swear to God, I don't know who they said. That man bones got found, like that man bones got found, just bones. I swear to God. On top of this, he even puts Corbin in a song by saying Corbin got kidnapped. They found his bones. He was raw. Then in another song, he says Corbin got kidnapped. I heard about this one. Kidnapped? How the a grown man goes missing? I understand that beef is beef, hey, blah, blah, crazy. but at what point do morals come into play when we're dealing with the innocent? Before all this, Florida boys were known for being laid That's back. That's not with the innocent, bro. There was kids and y'all still out here popping people. Players, but now this new evil drill rap is really ridiculous. You can almost say that Fulio single-handedly turned things cold-hearted in his city. And of course, all the dissing of Corbin would come with consequences. January 5th, 2020. It's an early Wednesday morning in an 18. My birthday? January 5th. I just turned 19. 2020. It's I an early. just turned 19. Y'all in Florida acting up. Early Wednesday morning in an ATK member named Butta receives some vital information. Specifically, a girl that he messes with informs him that she knows the location of a very close friend of Fulio. She tells him that Fulio's right hand man named Lil Buck will be at a temp agency later in the morning. Obviously, Butta is excited about the drop and he instantly hits up his fellow stepper named Queso. Queso is also excited when he receives the news and he quickly heads over to Butta's. With no strategy or second thoughts, the duo now get ready to slide. They put on masks, remove their license plate, grab blowers, and head out to the location. At 7 in the morning, they park in front of the temp agency, waiting for Lil Buck to arrive. From what they know, he's going there to train for a job and to change his life around. But regardless of him not being a factor in the beef, they still want to stamp him just because of his association with Fulio. So for hours, they patiently wait for Lil Buck to show up at the office. Hours and hours go by and there's no sightings of Lil Buck. 
At this point, Queso figures that they're being set up or that simply Lil Buck isn't coming. So together, they decide to give up and they head down the street towards a shopping center. They're hungry, so they pull into the parking lot looking for restaurants. Then as Butta is driving around, he randomly notices Lil Buck on his left. So quickly, Butta makes a U-turn and follows Lil Buck through the parking lot. He then tells Queso to mask up and get ready. I'm gonna pull right alongside him. Well, Buck has no idea that he's being followed, so he parks his car and gingerly gets out. And that's when allegedly Queso so hops out of the car and Allegedly. does the business. Queso allegedly hops back in the car and they speed off quickly. After they exit the parking lot, they figure they're in the clear. But this is 2020. There's camps. Little do they know, an off-duty police officer saw the entire thing. So as they're speeding down Merrill Road, Butta notices the cop car behind him and he begins to panic. This is when Queso panics as well and comes up with the worst idea possible. He turns to Butta and yells, bust a U-turn, I'm gonna spray up the cop car. Butta oh disagrees and responds, no the hell you not, watch, I'm about to get us gone. He continues to smash on the gas. Crash out, bro. And he busts a sharp right into a neighborhood. <laughs> He loses control and smacks right into a pole. Thankfully, Butta and Queso are both okay, and they hop out of the car and run into somebody's backyard. With no better plan, Queso decides to smash somebody's sliding door and jumps inside the house. Butta follows him and says, yo, what are you doing? At this exact moment, the homeowner runs downstairs and sees them in the living room. Ah! That's when they whip out on him and tell him to bring them to the closet. So he takes them upstairs expecting to be robbed for his jewelry. Instead though, they simply ask him for a change of clothes, which he obviously gives up. So they put on collared shirts and khakis, hoping that once they go outside, the police won't recognize them. Obviously, this is f***ing but it it's ends dumb. up working out. Somehow, when Queso and Butta look out- Jacksonville, home, hey, Florida, state of dumb people died there's no police in the vicinity so they instantly call a friend to come pick them up and five minutes later an orange charger is there they casually walk outside hop in and the scat pack is off in the distance somehow they completely duck police at least for the meantime regardless though what they just did is the definition of crashing out all mm -hmm. because you hate fulio you're willing to crash out on his mans and risk your life in prison that's crazy. Either way, Butta and Queso assume that they're in the clear and they're excited that they eliminated yet another of Fulio's friends. Even though they can't seem to get to Fulio, they're dedicated to eliminate anything associated with him. And sadly, this includes mm -hmm. women too. On May 8th, 2020, Sister. Fulio's girlfriend would be shot while driving on a Jacksonville interstate. Thankfully though, she would be okay after Good. being rushed to the hospital. Well, in typical Fulio fashion, he and his girl would go on live showing that she's okay. Y'all thought I was dead. Y'all me up score just yet. <laughs> dumb. Mind you, I'm in South Carolina, man. Oh my gosh, he's that's a dumb woman. Straight tied it. I'm gonna I'm gonna post this on YouTube. Just straight tied it. Y'all ain't up score just yet, that boy. Regardless though, Queso and Young and Ace would take to the internet to clown the situation. Oh, don't look right. You finna cheat on her ass, uh, ugh. Ugh. At this point, we've entered demon territory. Like, there's no respect or morals on either side. Like, you can't get to Fulio, so you're gonna target his innocent girlfriend? <sighs> well, as we know, Fulio was built for this nonsense, and KTA would sadly return the favor. Like, oh, you're gonna target my girlfriend who has nothing to do with the beef? Watch yeah. this. I'm gonna target somebody on your side who has nothing to do with it as well. June 25th, 2020. It's a regular Thursday afternoon in East Jacksonville, and a 40 year old man named Busta is grabbing food at the Jack's Market. Busta is like a childhood uncle to Young and Ace, but he has nothing to do with his politics or anything in the streets. Well, little does he know, because of his connection to Young and Ace, he's now a target. That don't make sense. Over. At 5.15, he casually walks out of the store and right Probably just got off work too. There, a gray Sonata stops in its tracks. Then, three masked men hop out of the car and run down on Busta. <sighs> this was yet another heartless retaliation on somebody who had nothing to do with anything. Because he was like an OG figure in the community, a lot of people questioned why this happened and who was responsible. While rumors started to hit the streets that not only did Fulio call for this, but he was the one who actually did it himself. Nah. Yeah. 
Bulio is with a business, man. Granted though, the rumors are all over Reddit and Twitter, so you kinda have to take that for what it is. But regardless of if he's actually responsible or not, his lyrics would not help his defense. Directly after the incident, Fulia would drop a song called CCG, which stands for Closed Casket Gang. In the song, he disses Busta by saying Chi Chi was 40 years old running from bullets like a teen, Busta, he ain't have no face. So not only does he allegedly eliminate a 40 year old OG, but then he disses him disrespectfully in a song. All of this to get under Young and Ace's skin. Sadly though, this would only be the beginning of Fulio's evilness. All that, all that bad energy, come back and get you, boy. So now let's shift our focus to the other side, as Young and Ace keeps getting bigger and bigger and his pockets are getting fatter as well. This means he has more funds to amplify the beef. When your pockets are fat, you can get spanked, boy. Like at the beginning of the beef, as long as you stayed out of Jacksonville, you were pretty much safe. But now with money involved, anyone can cash in on your head. For whatever reason, Fulio doesn't realize this, and after the elimination of Busta, he flies out to Houston to lay low. In fact, he books a two-week Airbnb where he can record music, party, and you know about the girls in Houston. Well, during his extended- I seen him. I seen him on a vlog. That DreamCon vlog, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I seen him. I I, I will get a Tozen cosplay and act the fucking fool out there. Oh my goodness. I'm a shy man, but nigga. Hey, peep the anime content on the second. <laughs> I'm acting up. The trip, he also goes to a block party with a famous local rapper. And that takes us to July 6, 2020. While at the block party, Fulio makes the dumb decision to go live and show his location. Back to being stupid. Hold on. That mood. Yeah, guy shit. You say what? Like, hey man, we live, gang. Yeah, me gang. Boo. Oh yeah, what? We're in the middle of Texas. Yeah, you know we're the rich paper right now. Uh, big bro, what you say, gang? In the middle of the month. Yeah, man. Florida in this bitch. He goes on live to show what he's got going on, not knowing that there's people on his trail. Well, eventually, police arrive and the block party clears out by 8 p.m. Julio still standing outside. Good job, Texas As police. he's standing outside by himself, a black Nissan with tinted windows begins creeping up the street. Because he's out of town, he doesn't really think anything of it until the car gets right up on him and rolls down their window. They began dumping at Fulio. He quickly runs behind a nearby car and begins dumping back. At this point, the car pulls off and Fulio notices that he's hit. So his friends quickly rush to him, throw him in the car, and take him to the hospital. He was grazed in the head, but thankfully he ends up surviving. For most people like me, this would be a terrifying incident. But for yeah. Fulio, he doesn't seem to care and he goes on live during the whole Just process. Just so he can make a song. Oh, I'm you fucking stupid. <laughs> you had a situation in Houston where you actually got grazed in the head? I got grazed in the neck. They put like some little, I forgot to put on, they were like, you good, like you ain't got no entry going or nothing. You just got grazed by the glass and a little bullet frag and you good. Fulia was finally met with some consequences for everything he did. Kind of. Either way, the big question now is who did this, especially because it happened in Houston. Well, Young and Ace's right-hand man and fellow rapper named Fast Money Goon would admit to it in a song. I was lurking on his page and caught him lacking in Houston. We let off shots, then he went live, and I was like, we didn't get him. So yeah, pretty much Young and Ace's homie Fast Money Goon admits to doing this to Fulio. Mm. So now, if Fulio ever needed more motivation for revenge, this incident would do it. You target me when I'm out of town enjoying myself, and then you put my name in a song, mm, that's not gonna fly. And as you would expect, bodies would start to drop in the streets of Jacksonville. In fact, following this incident, three ATK members would lose their lives back to back to back. First, on September 9th, an ATK member and close friend of Young and Ace would lose his life while leaving the Regency Mall. 
Then on February 21st, two more ATK members would lose their lives. These would be notable ATK members and close friends of Young and Ace named B5 and Michi. On the night of February 21st, they went to a little dirt concert, enjoyed their time, and simply went back to- You talking about the, the new updates? Who you talking about? 2K? 2K got updates? sit in their car at one in the morning while they're sitting in their come up car after the concert a man simply walks up to the window <laughs> and just like that three aces are gone in retaliation for what they did to fulio in houston at this point the bodies are piling up tremendously on both sides and it would be hard to imagine that the beef gets even worse and on top of this with atk taking so many losses you'd almost imagine that they'd throw the white flag Okay, maybe that's too far, but at least you'd think that they'd want the beef to kind of calm down. But nope, at this very time, Young and Ace does the complete opposite, as he releases one of the most disrespectful diss songs in rap history. Black people, bro, all they do is crown to each other. Don't come here with that, with that racist stuff. On March 28th, 2021, Young and Ace drops Who I smoke? The entire song is dedicated to making fun of Fulio's dead friends and explaining how they lost their lives. From Lil Bibby, Trey D, Techie, Zion That's Brown, and lot. plenty more. The mainstream yeah. industry had never seen anything like this before. Name dropping dead ops and trolling how they died. That's just blasphemous to everyone. I've seen so for it. weeks, the song blew up everywhere and pretty much everyone was trolling Fulio. The song pretty much had all the rap world assuming that Fulio was some sort of victim. But we know that that's definitely not true. As we know, Fulio already has a short temper, so can you imagine how he received this song? Basically, the whole country was singing along to mm -hmm. disses to those who were closest to him. <sighs> Can't even imagine. So instead of playing the sympathy role, he decides to fire back in the most disrespectful way possible. Now that all of his dead family and friends were broadcasted to the world, he decides to do the same to Young and Ace, but even in a worse way. In his response called When I See You, he records oh, yeah. the music video at the graveside of Young and Ace's brother. On top of this, he holds up a poster showing the deaths of 2, 3, 4, and Quan, and basically makes fun of how they died. The entire song is flat out evil, and the rap world was literally shocked. And all those samples were fucked. Shocked. And this is when the world is introduced to the character of Fulio. The world understands that he's a cold demon who has no limits on his disrespect. Because of the shock value, it elevates his fame, and of course, yep. it pads his pockets. At and then that ego just made it bigger than what it was before. At this point, he has enough money to leave Jacksonville for good and to take the closest people. He could have been left. I don't care what you say. An apartment in Texas, he could have been left. But with him. But when you're this knee deep in a beef, there's somewhat of a pride of staying in your city. Like, I ain't running from no one. So even with all this fame and fortune, Fulio stays his butt in the trenches of Jacksonville. Although he tries his best to stay low key and to move with caution, staying in Jacksonville definitely catches up with him. November 8th, 2021. It's a Monday evening and Fulio's headed My little brother and sister birthday to a studio session in Jacksonville's Riverside District. Because it's located in an upscale area, he figures he can go there completely unnoticed. So at 8 p.m. he arrives, parks his car in a residential area and walks down to the studio. As he's in there recording bangers, his homies are recording selfie videos clearly showing him at the studio. Stupid. Of course, they post them on their Instagram stories, and subsequently, the rivals notice. Aw, shit. Somehow, they deduce exactly which studio he's at, and they head there instantly. Obviously, I thought... I thought he went live. They know that Fulio's with a bunch of hitters, so ambushing the studio is not a smart idea. So when they arrive at 11.30, they simply wait down the street and observe what's going on. They're unsure if they'll be able to do anything, but their hope is that Fulio somehow walks outside by himself. They wait in their car for 20 minutes, and then out of nowhere they notice Fulio walking out of the studio. Oh my goodness, there he is walking by himself up the street. They wait for him to make it up Ernest Street away from their sight. This way if they turn on their car he won't be alerted. Then they head around the Ugh. block and head down Ernest Street hoping to face him head on. When they bend the corner they notice he's right there opening his car door. So instantly two of the members hop out of the car and Fulio hears them coming. Bam. They start blowing at him from down the street and Fulio starts blowing back. A hundred shots go off in under 10 seconds and mm. Fulio runs out of ammo. I walk to my, I get to the driver's side of the door, I open the door. I thought like, that's when he got packed up. I get to sit down a little bit and going. So I lean back, up my gun, go to shoot him back. I shoot my whole clip and shit. 
So at this point, while you got no one to get out, get up out of your state, you could have been left an apartment in Texas. You don't need no big crib. You could have kept on making music down there. Who cares, bro? It'll got your ego. For sure. Officer still thundering. But you would have been alive. He runs behind some cars for coverage. Fulio figures that they got the best of him, but thankfully the officer Ben Simmons in the clutch. I run back to the front of the house. It was a white dude came outside. He like, what happened to you? Good? I ain't even looking at my leg at first. I'm like, yeah. He like, man, your leg's bleeding. He like, you want me to take it to the hospital? I'm like, damn. Fulio, for whatever reason, in the moment he assumes that if he goes to the hospital, it might look suspicious. So instead, he simply wraps up his leg and waits for police to arrive. I got it. I basically got to see the situation under control. You know what I'm saying? So the police come, ask me what happened, what gun I shot. Well, I give them the gun, and they put me in the back of the police car till the crime scene was cleared, and they let me go. This could have easily been the end of Fulio, and on some level, he kind of knew that. To say the least, it certainly shook him up, and is the reason he temporarily would leave Jacksonville. I ain't gonna count. I was hearing them gunshots for shit. like a week. Just think about that shit. Like every time I go to sleep, I just think about that PTSD. shit. PTSD. Like, like, damn. I could have been dead, boy. That shit was traumatized, man. You should have thought about that the first time you got shot. So now the demon rapper coincidentally heads for LA to focus on music and stay out of the streets. To live and die in LA is the place to be. Still, though, he's able to focus on his music career, stay out of trouble, and of course, elevate his music career. He's able to maintain this for nearly two years, and during this time, the beef in Jacksonville has completely quieted down. However, because of his silly pride and his itch to be in the trenches, he eventually returns to Jacksonville. And of course, Dumb. as soon as he touches down, he's right back to causing chaos in the streets. Stupid. That takes us to October 6, 2023. The king is finally home and he's already making demands in the streets. It's been way too quiet in Jacksonville and Fulio wants to see some action on the rivals. So allegedly, he spontaneously decides to put $20,000 on a rival's head. In particular, this would be Queso's blood cousin named Antonio mm. Tilly. Why he targets him specifically? Well, from what the rumors say, Tilly did some serious damage on Fulio's side. <laughs> So quickly, the word gets around and some hitters step up to the plate. One of which will be a man named Jaquan Mills, who definitely needs the money and also realizes that cashing in will not be easy. Basically, Tilly is not the type of guy you're just gonna catch in traffic, you better put a plan together. So quickly, Jaquan comes up with a plan which involves his girlfriend Diamond Harris. Oh, here we so go. So basically, Diamond slides in Tilly's DMs talking spicy. May I want you? I want to see your daddy. And it worked, of huh? course, Tilly falls for the bait and they set up a plan to meet up. He's excited to pull up at her house tonight, thinking he's about to have the time of his life. So at 6.30 p.m., he hops in an Uber headed for North Jacksonville. Tilly's in the Uber with nothing but you feel me on his mind. At 6.55, the Uber arrives at the location on Kylan Drive and Tilly hops out without paying attention to his surroundings. The second he steps out of the Uber, he's absolutely lit up like a Christmas tree. Mm. Sadly, not only did Tilly lose his life, but so did the innocent Uber driver. Gracious, man. Y'all don't care about nothing. A call for the community to rally around the family of an Uber driver who was shot and killed last month. Making his bread. Uh, Uber. Making, just making his bread, man. He can't even do that no more. The Justice Coalition held a news conference today asking for help and resources for the family of Bryant Grun. A family forced to start over. I can't even tell you how this has affected our family. Yet more senseless Little girl without a pops. Violence in the streets of Jacksonville, allegedly at the hands of Fulio. While once word gets around of the passing of Tilly, the rivals desperately want Fulio's head. Later this same night, Fulio is out and about in the streets of Jacksonville by himself like nothing just happened. In fact, to make matters worse, at 10.30 p.m., he decides to head to the rival's hood. In particular, he goes to their local store, I guess to show them that he's not worried about anything. This is my city, I'm back, and I call the shots. So at 11 p.m., he parks his car outside of the rival's magic market and simply walks inside. 
so while he's shopping for a vape, he's actually recognized by somebody who's affiliated with the other side, and from there an argument sparks. The man questions him like, what are you doing on this side of town, and Fulio's like, man, get the hell out of my face, man. For whatever reason, <laughs> Fulio isn't intimidated, and he buys his vape and gets back in his car. Now from here, he plans on joyriding around the city for the rest of the night, so he pulls out of the market, heads up the road, and pulls a right on 18th Street, and as soon as he turns the corner, his life flashes in front of him. Two men with choppers start blowing down his whip. Fulio tries his best to speed away, but sadly he smacks into a car. The assassins figure that they finally got him, so they gladly speed away. This time, Fulio is gravely injured, but thankfully an ambulance arrives. He's quickly rushed to the hospital where he undergoes an extensive surgery. While he's in surgery, his mom breaks the news from his Instagram page. Keep Fulio in your prayers, he was shot last night in his hating city. I mean, he is the hater in his city. He is. But either way, he is. everyone hopes he survives. Well, the next morning, the doctors Not present everybody. the news that Fulio did in fact make it. This was the closest call yet, and just goes to show how quickly the streets of Jacksonville respond. You got our homie hit at 7 o'clock, and by 11, you were hit up yourself. Well, because of this, Fulio leaves Jacksonville not only to recover and to dunk the rivals, but also to duck investigations. The loss of Tilly and the Uber driver was a major deal in the city, and he figured that it was only a matter of time. 13 days later, October 19th, 2023. A Jacksonville double murder earlier this month was part of a $20,000 gang hit according mm. to an arrest warrant. I ain't never saw the news about it. I just saw Twitter. We just received these mugshots of Juquan Mills hey, and Diamond Before Harris sure. arrested last week in the murder of a local teenager and a man who was driving him for Uber. Community advocates say this shows how out of control gang violence is here in our city. News for Jack's reporter Vic Michelucci tells us detectives believe the victims were set up. A high dollar hit. Jacksonville detectives believe this October 6th double murder in Moncrief was not random. Instead, it was a gang-related contract killing worth $20,000. The dollar figure that's attached to that is fairly high. We found this information in the arrest reports for 22-year-old Jaquan Mills and his girlfriend, 23-year-old Diamond Harris. Detectives believe Harris lured one of the victims, 19-year-old Antonio Tilly Jr., who thought he was meeting her for a date. Mm. Investigators accuse Mills of killing Tilly instead, collecting half of the bounty on his head. Police say they've identified another suspect involved in the murder, but they're still trying to track that person down. Tilly's Uber driver was caught up in the violence and also killed, shot in the car he was driving to make a living. After finding the DMs between Diamond and Tilly, police were able to completely open up the case. From there, it pretty much gave them everything they need to know except for who called the shot, who put the $20,000 on Tilly's head. Both Jaquan and Diamond discussed the $20,000 over text, but they never mentioned Fulio's name. They pretty much just called him the boss. Now, of course, if Jaquan and Diamond are smart, they can use this as leverage to get less time and snitch on Fulio. Now, of course, you'd assume that Fulio would be nervous about this, but instead, he's only focused on getting revenge for who lit up his car. And once he finds out who did it, he allegedly put $60,000 on their head. Oh, wee things are getting serious. This time, the alleged bounty is on an ATK associate named Tiger Sparks. Tiger. On January 4th, 2024, somebody cashes in on the check. Sadly, while posted up on Odessa Street in East Jacksonville, Tiger Sparks is sparked. At this point, Fulio's feeling untouchable. Every time you guys try to get me, I send something back and eliminate your homies. I mean, honestly, the fact that he survived this long is pretty remarkable, especially given that he just roams around the city of Jacksonville. He's basically like that cockroach at Granny's house that just roams around and every time you try to kill it, it just goes up. I ain't never seen some of that big holes. Under the couch or the fridge or something, you know? After surviving all of these beefs and shootings and everything, Fulio somehow approaches his 26th birthday. I mean, just think about it. From surviving his early childhood in Hilltop, to what happened to his dad, to what happened in high school, and then all the beef. It's 
pretty much insane that he made it this far. So given all that, his 26th birthday is a major cause for celebration, and Fulio knows this. So of course, he wants to do his 26th birthday weekend in the biggest way possible. Now of course, celebrating in Jacksonville would be way too dangerous, even though that would be something that Fulio would do. But instead, he decides to play it smart and party three hours away in the- It's dumb to be in Florida anyway city of Tampa. Dildo, as we know, three hours away may be way too close for comfort. And to make matters worse, weeks ahead of his birthday, he decides to post flyers promoting the events. Aw, oh, hell. Just ran out of space, too. Operation not permitted. It crashed. Ain't no way it just crashed. 503? It crashed. I gotta... I gotta highlight this then. Mm. Of course, this tells the rivals weeks ahead of time exactly where he'll be on his birthday. Definitely not a safe move. But at this point, Fulio just doesn't care. He's showing out and basically saying, if you want to come get me, come get me. And that takes us to his birthday weekend, June 20. Come on, Twitch at make sure. Can I highlight? Oh, I can't highlight nothing. 5.46, okay. Alright, boom. I forgot I, still, I forgot I was still on YouTube. 21st, 2024. It's a Saturday afternoon and Fulio is hosting a pool party at an Airbnb with his family and friends. The plan is for everyone to stay at the Airbnb for the whole weekend, not just use it for a pool party. However, by 7 o'clock a neighbor calls 911, they're all kicked out of the party and Fulio no longer has access to the Airbnb. So now he puts everything in his car and gets ready for his first club appearance. Probably was up in there smoking and all. What was that? What's that? What they call them? Airbnbs? Yeah. Smoking and all, man. The night. At 9.30, he and his boys head out to the Teasers nightclub for the first appearance. He arrives to the club, it's packed, it's late, he performs, and most importantly, he gets paid. Getting a big check on your birthday, there's nothing better than that. But little does Fulio know, while he's in the club, a couple of hitters are sitting in the parking lot waiting to cash in on his head. So now, let me introduce you to the hitters who are ready to stamp Fulio. First, we have Alicia Andrews and Isaiah Chance, associates of Young and Ace's ATK. Together, these two decided to steal a car in Jacksonville and drive it down. And I don't know how old they are, but guess what? They ain't never coming out until they up in that, um, that casket. ...to Tampa. That way, the license plates do not go back to their name. On top of this, the plan is that after they catch Fulio lacking after the club, they'll get rid of the car and stay at an Airbnb that's not registered to either of their names. Basically, these two are professionals, and they're dedicated to cash in on Fulio's head and... De professionals. ...definitely not get caught for it. But unfortunately, they're not the only ATK members who want to cash in as well, and let me introduce you to these guys. These would be Sean Gaithright and brothers Davion and Rashad Murphy. Not much is known about the brothers, but we do know that Sean Gaithright was a suburban kid just a couple years ago and was into all kinds of nerdy stuff. Why this matters? Well, you were a nerd. I'm a nerd. And now you're done. Your whole life done. You was a nerd. Well, you're going to be reading comics if you can get them up in the jailhouse now, nah, up in prison. I'm a nerd. I make nerd content on both channels. I watch X Men 97 on the main. I watch anime on the second. Got a thousand subs over there. Thousand almost two hundred. Five K on the main. I'm a nerd. You could have been doing something. Nerds get money. You'll see. Instead of getting a stolo like the others, Sean decides to borrow his mom's black Chevy. On top NBA young boy influenced him of this, he doesn't even change the license plate. This guy does not know what he's doing. Well, while Alicia and Isaiah are waiting outside the club, Sean and his boys are on their way from Jacksonville. He's probably like, he's probably like 19. Done. Well, it's now 10.30 and Sean and the Murphys arrive in Tampa. As soon as they touch down, they get in contact with Isaiah and Alicia and they tell them that they're ready to ah ah ah. So Alicia tells them that they're waiting outside the club but that there's too many... DTV. Hey, when they be saying that, mind you, I'm in South Carolina. I, you think I trust women in South Carolina? Mm. Mind you, me being me, the man more than I am. And I still don't. I don't care if she's like, oh, I'm, I'm me, believe in me. No. It's always a woman. 
That's the this, this second or third one. Police to make a move. She then tells Sean to go to her Airbnb and to wait there until it's time to slide. It's now 12.15 and Fulio finally leaves the first club headed to a second appearance. So at a distance, the two follow him to Truth 18. They wait for him and his crew to enter the club and now they start to scout the scene. This time, they don't spot any police and they see that the security is very minimal. So instantly, they hit up Sean and say pull up ASAP. So Sean and the Murphys arrive in 20 minutes all masked up and ready to bust. It's now 1 in the morning and Sean oh, say it like that. on Isaiah and the Murphys are masked up waiting for Fulio to hop out of the club. Then at 1.15 he finally walks outside with his crew, however he moves to the car very quickly and pulls off quick. The hitters were way too slow and Fulio was able to duck his way out of there fast. Still though, even though they missed this opportunity, they're destined to follow Fulio to wherever he's going. So at a distance they trail his car and this is looking like a perfect opportunity. Then at 2 in the morning, Fulio pulls into the Holiday Inn in North Tampa. He quickly parks in the front of the hotel. GG's. The Omerta 5 stays in the passenger seat. He then walks into the lobby to check in, but then they inform him that they accidentally double booked his room. He already got kicked out of the Airbnb earlier, and now the hotel that he paid for is telling him that they accidentally double booked his room. He's now really frustrated. So after they give him his refund, he has no choice but to walk back to his car. So he hops in. The hotel messed it up. Imagine the error from the ho from the hotel is what got you about the hotel and in front of them. The car and pulls out his phones with plans of calling hotels to look for availability. But little does you he stayed in a, you could have stayed right there in that lobby. You no, know, the ATK hitters are parked right across from him and they're ready to bounce out. So allegedly, Sean, Isaiah, and the two Murphys walk up to the car. They pull up on Fulio's side of the car, and before he can react. They absolutely unleash. I've seen this. A crime scene taking up this whole parking lot behind me. This is a holiday. Good milk. It's a street from USF. I'm not no milkman. Four people were shot, <laughs> and so were two cars. Police say they are also now a part of the investigation. A birthday celebration that took a turn for the worst. Now cars filled with bullet holes are at the center of an investigation to find out why famous rapper Julio Fulio, who just turned 26, was shot dead early this morning. At this point, it's part of the investigation, but it seems that they might have been coming here to the hotel to get a room. After a social Tampa police, good, ain't it? Yes, sir. Media post from Julio Fulio said he and his friends were kicked out of an Airbnb. They found themselves at this Holiday Inn where hotel guests like Jeremiah Claypool had to be escorted to and from their rooms post gunshots. I only heard one. It woke me up, but I, apparently there were more than that. Police say they got the call at 440 this morning. Julio Fulio, whose real name is Charles Jones, was confirmed dead at the scene while three other shooting victims were taken to the hospital. No one has been arrested in connection to this shooting. Oh my goodness, they finally got the boogeyman of Jacksonville. There's no way. At the same time that every- And I would not be wrong to say good. But there's too much death going around there. Oh my goodness. Everyone was shocked. I didn't know he was doing all that. The news, they also pretty much knew who was responsible. I mean, as soon as I learned everything about Doug too. Oh my goodness. There's an Aaron Hernandez documentary coming out too. I think it already dropped. I gotta watch that. I might post that. But of course, if there were any doubts, these would be completely put to rest the next day. Just a day after Fulio's death, Young and Ace would release a song called Game Over, alluding to the death of Fulio. Or at least we assume. After all the losses, the beef, and the disses, you really can't even shame Young and Ace for doing what he did. And when I say that, I mean the diss song, not eliminating Fulio, of course. <laughs> so I guess now Young and Ace feels like he won the beef. The top dog is gone, and that's it, right? I guess people gonna be looking for him still. They just waiting on him. In theory, the game really is over, and he won the beef because Fulio was gone, but the people around Fulio certainly do not feel that way. Mm -hmm. Even though they cut the head off the snake, it's still lethal. Directly after the devastating loss of Fulio, his KTA associates would get right to sliding. In fact, they would start spinning the city looking for anyone associated with Young and Ace or ATK. And just a week after the incident, they would locate a very close friend of Ace. On the night of June 28th, a friend named Fizzle would get torched while leaving his apartment in Orange Park.
basically this was the message that the beef isn't over and we're gonna keep sliding for Fulio. So if you thought that the situation would get better and Jacksonville would be safe, think again. Well now we circle back to the loss of Fulio. Alicia and Isaiah were convinced that they would never be caught because they executed perfectly. They used a stolen car from Jacksonville, masked up, had no fingerprints, and then returned to Jacksonville where they got rid of the car. But that license plate from that uh, light skin man? Yeah, GG's. He was dumb. Are in all of the evidence. There's basically no way of getting caught unless somebody snitches on them. Well, little did they- Yep, the nerd. They know Sean would be their complete downfall. Not only did he use his mom's car, but then after the incident, he drove straight to his aunt's house in Tampa. And there he was seen on camera outside her driveway, wiping down the car for evidence with no mask on. So basically, you're dumb for real. It would take Tampa police 10 days to track Sean's car from the There's crime spot right there. scene to his aunt's house, where then they used the ring camera to see his face. So just like that, it just jumped out the it just, hey it, it jumped out the wall. That Sean Gaithright is arrested and taken in. Time to end this vid. The vid over a minute, an hour and thirty one minutes. Oh yeah, hold on. Gotta mute the mic now. I gotta gotta keep an eye on that. It ain't even big either. It's like one of those that you find in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. And uh, I forgot. I'm out, I'm up out of space. So GG's to the vid. Yeah, five fifty six twenty three. Gotta remember that. Mute.